Hi everybody, welcome. Today we are going to be discussing the ruggedized mini rubidium oscillator launch. Our speakers are going to be Stavros Melakroinos, the Senior Product Manager in Atomic Clocks at Arolia, and David Garrigan, the Director of Engineering at Arolia Defense and Security. And I am your moderator, Patrick Bark, the Senior Marketing Coordinator at Arolia. Today, we will start off by discussing our leading clock technologies with a focus on space and ground. Then we'll move into discussing more specifics on the ruggedized MRO50. So we'll discuss the applications, the specifications, the design, performance, do some deep diving on the product itself. From there, we'll discuss the use cases and we'll move to the Q&A section. At the end of the presentation, I will take a moment to review the questions and following the presentation, I will post the questions and answers to our event webpage. If you lose connection, please just use the link that got you to this webinar in the first place. And just so everyone is aware, we're recording this presentation for anybody who was unable to make it today and it will be made available to everyone following the presentation. So our first speaker today will be Stavros. So Stavros, please take it away. Thanks very much, Patrick. Hello, everybody. I would like to take you through our uh, clock technologies and then present the MRO 50 Ruggedized, the new product that we launched uh, just recently at, at the International Microwave Symposium. So we are a manufacturer of with a long-standing heritage in the industry. We produce space ultra stable crystal oscillators and atomic clocks with many references and missions in the European and international space agencies and various commercial payload providers. Those type of applications consist from GNSS programs, commercial and military satellite communications, uh, earth observations, static aperture radar, or even uh, master clock payloads. Our product line in space is separated in two categories, basically the crystal oscillators, which you see here with over uh, about 300 flight models currently flying on your left, the master oscillator and the low noise master oscillator. And on the right, the rubidium atomic frequency standard and our passive hydrogen miser, which is in collaboration with uh, Leonardo. All of those products currently flying on the Galileo first generation and the recently awarded uh, Galileo second generation program. In the other category of portfolio covers uh, uh, applications in the industry, science and meteorology. There we have three major solutions uh, consisting of low swap rubidium sources primary reference sources and frequency stability instruments for testing and calibration, as well as the passive and active hydrogen measures for ground applications. Our portfolio is consistently growing, covering a huge area of applications, spanning from timing and synchronization, different and various defense and critical infrastructure applications, SATCOM, Telecom, GNSS PMT, other than GNSS systems, low earth orbit applications, mobile systems, and uh, science and metrology. Uh, most recent acquisition uh, was the integration and the acquisition of T4 Science, which expands our portfolio to the ground measures for frequency reference sources. And for, with this portfolio, we access uh, a market, a traditional market in the science and metrology, like very long baseline interferometry, deep space tracking, and uh, GNSS satellite monitoring and geodesy. With the MRO 50 ruggedized, as I mentioned, which was launched in the International Microwave Symposium, our aim is to uh, enter new markets uh, for which extreme environments and conditions are needed to be satisfied and addressed by the component, by the atomic oscillator. In this case, the ruggedized MRO 50 is a continuation of our MRO 50 family comes as the, its name declares with uh, increased uh, ruggedization 
and we're hoping that to address uh, markets in the defense sector mainly, such as uh, C5 ISR, Command Control Communication Computer Cyber Security and Intelligence, where situational aware awareness is important and also resiliency against uh, intentional interference, uh, jamming and spoofers is also a must. Such communication can comprise from different various uh, advanced turning waveforms, tactical radars, uh, interception, interceptors, electronic warfare systems, airborne and avionics, or even uh, for low earth orbit applications. But more of this will be uh, detailed in the use case section further down the presentations. A couple of words about the Ragged Eisenhower 50 in its design. Its dimensions here uh, as shown uh, span a width and length of two inches uh, or 50.8 millimeter each and in height uh, 0 0.79 inch or 20 millimeter two centimeters in height. Its stability comes with four to the minus 11 at one second and we uh, has um, at the short term and the, the long term aging is uh, five to the minus 12 per day. Uh, as I said before, it was designed to operate in extreme environments such as uh, wide operating temperature ranges uh, spanning minus 42 plus 80 degrees. And it comes with the lowest power consumption in its category, in the miniature atomic clock category with 0 0.45 uh, watts, the 5 volt version and 0 0.36 watts, the 3.3 uh, volt version. As vibration in those environments is requested, the MRO50 uh, ragged eyes has been qualified for the MIL 810 standards at 7.7 .7 GRMS per axis, and it can withstand and remain operational for shocks up to 50 G in according to the uh, 202 MIL standards. So in this slide, uh, we can have a high level snapshot on the design structure of the MRO50. On the right image on the top, we can see the components of the physics package consisting from the light source, which is a pixel, the rubidium vapor cell and the cylinder coupling, as well as the two C-fuel coils and the optical filter. On the bottom uh, of the right picture, we can see the electronic package uh, components consisting basically from the system of the microwave generation, the detection circuitry, the PLL, and the temperature controllers as well as the microprocessors that handles all the calculational tasks and the signal processing. Yeah. Our MRO50 is based on the double resonance technique uh, as compared to uh, the coherent population traffic technique. The double resonance is named for the requirement that the optical and microwave fields are both resonant with the appropriate atomic transitions. In principle, the double resonance technique can be achieved by optically uh, pumping atoms into one of two clock states via a narrow line with optical source. For that, we use a VIXEL for optical pumping and state detection. And how much light will be absorbed in the gas cell in which the alkali uh, is contained, in this case in a rubidium 85, is detected by a photodetector. The cell is a millimeter scale chamber made of transparent glass, and inside the vapor cell is a small amount of uh, rubidium 85. In our approach, uh, as opposed to the coherent population traffic technique, we do not need a high frequency modulation of the VIXEL diode. Uh, the fact that we don't use cavity allows us to make a compact physics package of two cubic centimeters uh, in volume, which is also very comparable to the size of the CBT uh, solution. But uh, instead, without because we don't use it, we do require an additional compact microwave antenna coupled to the rubidium uh, cell. In regards to the uh, MRO standard design, the MRO ragged has a one major difference at the bottom of its plate, as you can see. We have the insertion of five screw holes now for the ragged on the PCB, but also we have improvements internally that consist from reinforcing the mechanical design for the physical package and the mounting. But uh, we have also have improved the phase noise uh, and we have incorporated a higher temperature laser diode. And because of the improved phase noise, of course, we get an improved Allen deviation stability in the short and long term.
comparing and for information the MRO50 when we classified on a graph versus power consumption and a time error in day we can see here on the yellow circle where it sits compared to technologies like the chip scale atomic clocks or the miniature atomic clocks which is the brother technology of the MRO50 and on the rest of this linear relationship between power and time error, the larger the cell of the clock becomes, uh, the more power they consume. You can see technologies uh, other like uh, the mini rubidium atomic frequency standards or the passive and the active hydrogen measures. And you can see clearly the MRO50, if we were to compare it to competitive miniature atomic clock uh, uh, solutions in the market, is distinctly uh, much less power hungry. And and sits at the category very close to the chip scale in terms of power consumption, but with an order of magnitude better in terms of accuracy and precision. Therefore, it's the best combination of low power and holdover um, or early, time error in the day amongst the max segment with holdover below one micro. And with a three volt version, we can consume about 360 milliwatts. On the right, you can see the temperature behavior of the ragged eyes MRO50 uh, to spanning the whole range of minus 40 to plus 80 on the uh, right y-axis. And on the left, you can see the, the frequency uh, stability coefficients uh, averaged over the whole period, over the whole ranging uh, of the operating temperature, which is about two to the minus 10 average but we specified four to the minus 10. In regards to the phase noise, that is the performance we have currently specified for the MRO50 standard. We see here a distinct uh, area between uh, 1 to 10 hertz uh, with this kind of behavior or bump and the noise floor of around uh, minus 150 dBc. And with the ragged eyes MRO50, we have uh, improved this area, 1 hertz to 10 hertz. And of course, the noise floor is approaching minus 150 dBc. In terms of uh, short and long term stability expressed by Allen deviation, the current specification of MRO50 is the green line, whereas through measurements of various units, we are uh, sitting around here. So we start uh, by an order of magnitude uh, around one, uh, four to the minus 11 at one second with a special version. And we reach uh, five to the minus 12 uh, over a day. And with the MRO50 ragged-ized, uh, we have started around 2 to the minus 11 at one second, and we reach a stability of around 3 to the minus 12 a day. Finally, in terms of vibration, as I said at the beginning, the MRO50 ragged-ized was designed to withstand increased vibration at 7.7 .7 GRMS operational so that means we maintain locking uh, to this level but we also withstands 10.9 grms non-operational in shocks we pass both three 30 g's at 11 milliseconds and 50 g's which is its current specification at 11 milliseconds in terms of use cases one of um, Characteristic use case is around resilient GNSS. The inclusion of MRO50 into military resilient GNSS receiver would allow uh, soldiers' equipment to remain synchronized with GNSS satellite clocks. Reacquisition would be very quickly, uh, so less processing power will be required on the receiver, and therefore uh, energy consumption will uh, drop significantly in regards to other uh, type of sources, timing sources included. And of course, uh, it will increase uh, resilience against spoofing and jamming, while the uh, operational receiver on the field is searching for GNSS uh, satellites to lock on. The faster warm-up of the MRO50, which is around two minutes only, so it's the lowest in the market category of miniature atomic clocks, can lead also to faster time-to-first fix after a loss of uh, GNSS satellites or the, at the at, um, cold startup of the receiver, and therefore lower power consumption on the receiver as well.
Uh, all these, of course, are advantages which increase the emission duration and battery life, and they provide a significant advantage on the field. The main features that impact uh, the, this performance on the Genesis receiver, uh, resilient Genesis receiver, will be st its stability at the short term and medium term, as well as the stability on the long term. And as I said before, the warm up power and size, which will increase significantly mission duration and battery life. And with this, I will pass it on to my colleague and Director of Engineering at Rolia Defense, David Gerrigan. Thank you, Stavros. Here to talk about how the benefits of a low swap MRO50 as it relates to RF communication systems. Because of the tight synchronization between the receiver and the transmitting radio that the MRO50 gives you in a GPS denied environment, because the low holdover of the oscillator allows communication systems to use really fast frequency hopping hop rates. It also enables the use of advanced waveforms, specifically MNA waveforms, which are mobile ad hoc networking waveforms. And this gives the users high data throughput, and it also allows them to have many simultaneous users on the waveform. As the diagram depicts, the time spent synchronizing the waveform and the time spent with the guard bands of a waveform are essentially wasted to the user because what the user really cares about is the data that is passed. Additionally, for largely the same reasons, and a GPS denied environment for distributed radar systems where there are many radars simultaneously pointing at an item of interest, all of the data uh, can be precisely timestamped and aggregated to give a very clear image of our item of interest that's in view of all the satellites. If we use similar logic to underwater systems, we can go into sonar, which is essentially the same logic. Under the water, you could have many sensing elements all precisely timestamped when they're synchronized to give a clearer picture of what all of the sonar systems are looking at. There's integrated sonar image for multiple underwater unmanned vehicles to detect targets in a large underwater area. And they also um, have energy efficiency and precision navigation underwater. Lastly, in the application of signals of opportunity, these are applications where in a GNSS denied environment, a navigation is attempted by looking at other RF signals in the area. And once again, this is where the high performing holdover of the MRO50 provides an advantage. Similar to GPS and GNSS signal tracking, the signals of opportunity, signal acquisition and tracking requires uh, loops such as frequency locked loops, phase locked loops, and delay locked loops. And so when tracking signals with high transmission rates, the high accuracy oscillators such as the MRO50 are essential to keeping the tracking loops properly aligned. Physical oscillators in general provide better stability and less drift than numerically controlled oscillators that are used in legacy applications. So the software defined radios um, that are used for signals of opportunity tracking will typically use a lower performing oscillator such as TCXOs and give inferior performance to what could be gained from using an MRO50 oscillator on the same radios. And below here, we also reference a recent paper on tracking for signals of opportunity where they talk about clock biases in detail. And uh, from that, you can clearly see the advantage of using a high precision oscillator such as the MRO50. All right, thank you so much, Stavros and David. Yep. That's a lot of very insightful information for a very exciting update. So at this point, I will start reading off the questions that people have been adding to the chat throughout the webinar. So please, if you do have more questions right now, feel free to enter those into the questions tab and we'll review those. And if you think of something after the fact, 
please feel free to contact us. All right, so we did get one question. Is my company eligible to obtain the web address of these technologies and the future products? So that is all right available on Arolia.com. If you use this QR code on the screen right here, you can see it as well. And also, if you are interested in the product, if you navigate to the polls tab on the right side of the screen right now, then if you just click yes, um, we will get all of the necessary information to you. All right, so our first question is um, the standard mill temp range goes to 85 DEG. Um, will this comply with that range? Uh, I will answer that one. Patrick, can you hear me well? Yep. All right. So there's not an actual per se standard existing out there based on the MIL standards uh, that dictates a temperature range up to 85. Most of the oscillators, they do operate for military application extreme environments. They provide operating uh, temperatures between minus 40 other ones up to plus 75 or plus 80. The MRO50, as it specified, is up to plus 80 so far. And it will operate with the great performance above that, up to up to 85, if this is needed. But uh, we don't specify up to 85. We don't guarantee the performance up, uh, above 80. All right, so the next question we have is, how can small, low-power atomic clocks enhance the performance of GNSS receivers? This is a very good question. Um, I would have to uh, have more time to explain the technicalities around it, but I will try to be very brief and, um, and as succinct as possible. Basically, the small, low-power atomic clock uh, can enhance the performance of GNSS in several uh, receivers in a several uh, important ways. One of those is during the acquisition. In order to acquire generic GNSS code, the, the receiver must do a search both in frequency and time and determine the unique receiver frequency and time that gives a high correlation between the receiver generated code and the code received from the satellite. For instance, some military receivers that need to acquire the PY precise code, which is not open to civilians. And in order to do that, they must first acquire the CA code, which has a very short code length. And determining the time from the signal, then they can use it to inform and acquire the PY code. While this acquisition is very works well in many circumstances, the CA code is broadcast in much narrower bandwidth uh, than the PY code. And therefore, if a small clock is available to the receiver and timing to within one millisecond, this can be achieved over long periods acquisition of the, and therefore long periods acquisition of the CA code is not required. And on the other hand, the determination of the phase biases um, of the frequency offsets uh, can be better determined with an accurate clock than a local TCXO oscillator because of the Doppler shift uh, during the satellite's moves as it, as it moves. So therefore, from this perspective, uh, uh, an atomic, precise atomic clock uh, is much more advantageous uh, than a local uh, crystal oscillator. On the other hand, if uh, uh, during the acquisition, the, you're operating under jamming or um, spoofing environment, um, the better holdover that an atomic miniature atomic clock provides can help the receiver mitigate and understand the effects of those two um, interferences. All right, thank you, Stavros. Our next question is, I would like to integrate a couple of advanced imaging and LIDAR systems that produce a great deal of data on the soldier slash Marine in a combat scenario. I need to make sure that information is bi-directional in real time as well for UAV and unmanned operation of this same data. Um, so I guess the question is... is I, I am supposing, I do not understand very well, but I'm supposing the bi-directional, bi it means in real time, it means either the, the transmission of data or the transmission of uh, time dissemination between 
the different, uh, let's say, uh, systems in the UAV and some type of ground system, and how this can be perfectly synchronized. Um, again, um, if this is the case, uh, a precise oscillator on board the UAV operation system uh, can significantly increase the precision of the local, uh, let's say, time scale in some sort of sense, so that it can be keep the, the different uh, systems, different UAV uh, operating uh, tightly synchronized to the central source, which is on the ground uh, at some point for which will acquire those data. So if this is the question, then the atomic clock, miniature atomic clocks is, is a solution for that. And it also sounds like this might be a question that's very situation specific. So I would definitely encourage you if you have a uh, use case that you're wondering how well this works or specifically and you want numbers with how it works to click the yes in the poll right now and Stavros or anybody from our team can get a hold of you and work on this solution with you. So our next question is the data sheet gives MTBF of 10 years at 25 do you have data for MTBF at different temperatures? Again, this is um, a specification as it's usually used in the market. Uh, we always specify things at 25 degrees. If more data MTBF uh, sim uh, estimations are in different temperature rates, please have uh, the interested part the parties to come in touch with us. All right, our next question is, is the microwave excitation region resonant? Uh, don't understand this question. Maybe uh, the person who would like to know a bit more about it uh, um, can contact us and uh, we can uh, provide him a full answer by in writing. All right. And what is the magnitude of improvements in current COTS SDR? you would expect if replacing with an MRO50? Uh, it depends on how, in which part of the SDR software defined radio uh, solution you wanna use. Um, a precise timing solution um, would encourage the person who posed this question to come in touch with us so we can discuss their use case and provide uh, an exact answer. All right. How would MRO50 be used and integrated in GNSS slash AHRS slash INS navigation-based tactical UAVs in order to improve performance and continue operating or flying in GNSS denied environments? And the second part of that question is, would integration be transparent or somehow plug and play? Um, this this depends on the OEM manufacturer of the device, which integrates a GNSS receiver plus or not uh, an INS uh, component. Uh, at Aurolia, we do have uh, this kind of solutions already. Um, and in this case, uh, to my knowledge, would be a plug and play. But if the interested party is uh, willing to integrate all these on their own, it won't be an, a plug and play solution because then they will have to do an integration uh, workload around it to integrate the different parts. So uh, there are solutions in the market. One of those Aurolia really is offering as well um, uh, with GNSS and, and uh, Atomic uh, Clock. And in this case, it would be a plug and play. All right, and it looks like our last question here is the 3.3 volt option has a much lower max power supply ripple requirement. What are the implications of not meeting less than five millivolts ripple? Uh, we don't have this uh, in our specifications. Uh, the interested person is encouraged to contact us and we'll provide an answer in regards to this all right so last call for other questions here all right we just got another one can the mro keep sync without power supply it will go in off mode um so it will uh basically be in a in a in sleep then you have to switch it on back again with a power supply so they can uh 
lock-on in the atomic transition. And therefore, if keeping sync means in holdover, then of course, if you cut out power supply, there won't be any holdover acting on the system that you have integrated. All right, here's another one. Does the MRO50 need to be mounted on a specific heat sink or nope. have a heat insulator surrounding it? Not at all. Basically, because of its lowest power consumption that you can find in the market in the category of miniature atomic clocks, there is no need for heat sink, uh, neither a heat insulator surrounding it. So therefore, it doesn't pose any threat compared to other solutions uh, to surrounding electronics. It's a very nice question. Thanks for yeah, the person to the person asking it. All right. Are there any other questions? All right. So at this point, we'll wrap up. So at any point, people can contact us at sales at Arolia.com or Arolia.com slash contact. Um, you can also use the learn more QR code that's on the screen right now. Otherwise, thank you so much for attending. We will be sending out the presentation and the replay following this event, and we'll update the event page with the Q&A results of everything we just reviewed here so that you've got a way to view those as well. Once again, please use the poll tab on the right if you wish to be contacted about the MRO 50 recognized. Otherwise, have a wonderful day and thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. Thanks, everybody. Thank you so much, Stavros. Thank you so much, David. We appreciate all your help.